So how do we install Drupal? How do we get Drupal working? How do we get it connected to our MySQL database? And how do we get that site launched? Um, there's a couple steps, but they're actually pretty simple. The first thing we need to do is we need to create a configuration file for the Drupal installation. And this is the file that's going to contain sort of the keys to the gas tank, right? This is going to be the file that can, tells Drupal where to find the MySQL database and how to log into it. And um, there's different ways of doing this. I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to log in via Cyberduck um, to show you how simple it really is. So here's Cyberduck. We're going to open up a new connection. We're going to log into our server, which is Robo bunnyattack.com and what's our username let's open up our little file here to see our file of important information test user uh, there it is I'm gonna put this crazy long password in here too and we're gonna connect and there we go we're connected let's go into test.robobunnyattack.com and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move into the Drupal directory and we're gonna see all the different files we have here there's a whole lot of files here um, and uh, the file that we want we have to do a little digging to find. We need to go into the sites folder right here. And if this isn't in alphabetical order, you can just click on file name to get it in alphabetical order. So you can quickly find that. Let's move into the sites directory. And inside here, you'll see a directory that's called default. And we want to go inside there too. And this is the file we're looking for, this default.settings.php. Um, what we need to do is we need to duplicate this file and we need to rename it to just settings.php. Don't just rename this file to settings.php. Drupal actually needs the default.settings.php plus a separate file called settings.php. So to duplicate this, we're just going to, I've got it selected. I'm just going to go under file, duplicate. And then Cyberduck says, what do you want to call this? And I'd be like, let's just call it settings. Settings.php, make sure that it's actually settings.php. There's no spaces, there's nothing like that, okay? Let's go ahead and click duplicate and watch the activity down there. There we go. Now we've got two identical files. The only difference being is that this file right here we just created, okay? We've just created the configuration file. Believe it or not, we don't actually have to edit this file manually. We could, but it is much more fun to finish the configuration using the Drupal installer and let me show you how to do that. To do this we're actually going to just navigate to the base URL of your Drupal site. And so what's the base URL for your Drupal site? Well we know what our subdomain is. It's just, oops, let's click in there, test.robobunnyattack.com. But if I go there it just brings me to this page, right? That's not the page we want. We actually installed, remember, if you, if you haven't remembered, let's just go back here. Where did we install Drupal? We installed Drupal inside this folder called Drupal. So we actually need to say, hey, go in the Drupal folder. There we go, okay? So I'm gonna go here, and I'm just gonna point the browser here, and we're gonna see what happens. I'm gonna click on Enter, and see Drupal is pretty smart. Drupal says, hey, you haven't actually finished installing me yet, so I'm gonna automatically load this install.php file uh, to walk you through the rest of the process. And so we just follow the instructions here. This first of all asks you to select an installation profile. We want standard, okay? Don't worry about minimal. We want the standard installation profile. Let's click the nice save and continue button. And then it asks you to choose a language. Well, you don't really have much choice. We just want the English, so that's fine. Save and continue. And next, we need to configure our database. Okay, so this is, this is us giving the information to Drupal to tell it where to find this database. And for us, we've, we've set up a MySQL database, haven't we? Um, and so to access this database, we're actually going to just open up our little text file here, and we're gonna get the database information that we pulled here. The database name is just test database 201207. So let's go find that. I'm gonna click that in here, okay. What's the username? Let's go back and check. Our username is testdbuser201207. This is what I meant earlier when we were creating this database. I said we would never have to remember this. See, we're just going to program it in here and then Drupal's going to remember it for us, which is awesome. Here's our password. Make sure you're putting the correct password in here. It's got to be the MySQL database password. Okay. And then we're not done yet. We actually have to click on advanced options because we're so, oh, so advanced. Do you remember when you were creating your MySQL database and there was this mumbo jumbo about how localhost was not going to work? See, the default here is localhost. We don't want that. That's not going to work. We actually need to write the correct host name here. So to do that, 
Look, host name right there. We copied it here. Isn't this important information right here? Isn't this file handy? Sure is. Let's copy that and let's just pop that in there. That's it. We can leave everything else blank, but there we go. We've got our database name. We've got our database username. We've got our database password. And under this advanced option, we have the database host. Are you ready for this? Let's click save and continue and see what happens. So now Drupal is going, doot, 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 doot. it's trying to connect to the database. It wants to see if everything's working out okay. It's taking a long time. And so now what's happening is that Drupal is actually going in and, and initializing everything. It's installing all this stuff. You just have to relax and watch this little bar go. There's nothing else you need to do. So let's just watch this go. Do -do -do. I know it's exciting. We're almost there. So close. Just imagine if you had to hand code that all yourself. Oh, there we go. So now we're in the home stretch. We need to just do the final, final site configuration. We need to give it a site name. So we're just going to say test Drupal's site. Okay, site email address. Make sure you actually write a correct email address. This is if you lose your password, this is where it's going to send it to. Robobunnyattack.com. Okay, um, actually, I lied. This is not where it's going to send lose pa uh, lose lost passwords this is your config just your registration information all that stuff is here regardless put a real email address there username it's the first username uh this is the username <laughs> yet another username this is the username you're going to use to actually log into your drupal site in order to configure it uh, and do you know change the look of your site and add different posts and add content and all sorts of stuff you'll be using this a lot um don't pick admin okay um a lot of people will choose admin. That's a bad idea. That's a lot of people because so many people ch pick admin. Um, it makes it just that much easier for people to hack into your site. All they need to do is then just guess your password. Pick something a bit more unique, even if it's just your name. Okay. In this case, I'm going to say because this is just a test anyway. Is test Drupal uh, user. Okay. Uh, my email address. This absolutely has to be a correct email address. And this is the email address that if you happen to lose your password for this. It's going to send you a replacement password to this email address right here. So make sure this is correct. Okay, password. Let's use strong password generator to generate a strong password. So we certainly do not want anyone to hack our Drupal site. That one looks strong. <laughs> Let's copy that in there. Crazy. Look, Drupal says, yeah, that's strong. Good stuff. Okay. It's telling us, why don't you add punctuation? Because our password is 30 characters long. Give me a break. It's long enough. Okay. Um, default country. Well, I'm going to go ahead and write. I'm going to choose Canada here. You can choose your default country. Default time zone. Oh, why not? I'm going to go ahead and pick Toronto, which is about the closest I can get to Hamilton. Um, check for updates automatically. Sure. Receive up an email notification. Sure. Why not? Now, before we hit save and continue, let's just review here. Here's our site name. Here's our site email address. We should really write this stuff down, shouldn't we? Yeah, we should. So I'm going to actually open this up and I'm going to say Drupal admin info. Okay. Um, I'm going to say Drupal admin username is this. Drupal admin password is what's that? Oh no. I closed that thing. Oh, it's over here. Phew. I don't know why it ended up over there. Okay copy that right there. Good stuff. Um, you know what else we should do? We should actually just to make life simple for ourselves, we should just copy that address right in here. Site URL. Just so we've got a quick reference to that. I'm going to go ahead and save that. So it's all in the same place. Isn't that handy? Um, 
and we've chosen the country and the time zone. We could change this later if we wanted to, but that's all good. And we've left that as is. I'm going to go ahead and click Save and Continue, and let's see what happens. Do do do. We are now about to get a confirmation that we have in successfully installed Drupal. Isn't that exciting? Shall we go visit our new site? Yes, we shall. And there's the address right here. There's a fresh installation of Drupal. You just installed this all by yourself. You created the database. You created the subdomain. You created everything. You even went and did all that cool stuff using the command line. How cool is that? Now, because we're logged in, this automatically logs us in, because we're logged in as test Drupal user here, okay, um, we get this black band at the top. This is kind of our administrative bar. Um, normal use, normal site visitors are not going to see this. You want to see what this looks like to normal site visitors? Let's just copy this, and why don't we just open up Safari here, and I'm going to pop that in there, and we're going to see what this looks like to the rest of the world. The rest of the world sees this. There's a brand new Drupal installation done by you. Congratulations, you did it. I hope that that was helpful. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.